Hi, I'm Tamsa Molly Barker, and I'm a biomimic. Um, when I was a kid, I was always interested in Jean Goodall and Dr. Doolittle, and I wanted to know, you know, what kind of animal we are. So I became a field biologist. I was um, studying plant biology in Hawaii and in the redwoods of the Santa Cruz Mountains in California. Um, and I was studying social biology with uh, the legendary evolutionary biologist, Robert Trivers. Well, I was a straight up evolutionary biologist. I even ended up working as a liveaboard marine mammal observer in the Bering Sea in Alaska uh, as the only woman um, on this crab boat with 25 fishermen which was a very interesting, but it also allowed me to get to the Amazon and uh, the Galapagos Islands. So I was completely hooked and I would do pretty much anything to get my fix. Ultimately, I got my doctorate in biological anthropology at NYU and I was studying hybridizing baboons in Ethiopia. Um, and that was the longest running and most extensive genetic study of any wild primate um, at that time and a, a model for addressing questions about altruism and social evolution and cooperation, questions about our human ancestry. And so I'm probably still better known for that work in those circles. But I was also a writer and a philosopher and artist. And I didn't want to spend my life blow darting baboons or pipetting in a lab. So instead of going into academics, I started running my then um, husband's photo studio. So it was a, it was a comfortable six figure lifestyle business. You know, we served and garden and worked from home. Um, I could write novels and paint and it was great. You know, but um, life happens, right? So well, one day our two month old daughter just didn't wake up and uh, it set a chain reaction um, into motion for our family. So five years later, I found myself, I was a single mother. I had three boys, all of them were undiagnosed on the spectrum. Uh, my ex was living in a van on the street, lost his marbles. And here I was holding a, um, the bag on a business with no photographer, no partner, grieving still hard. And it was the middle of a recession. So all that potential, uh, my knowledge and talent and passion seemed to have been for nothing. So I was really in a low spot and I was racking my brain, you know, what could I do with my one good life? You know, I'd, I'd fallen off the academic track, but I figured I could still teach. So I got a teaching adult learners certificate and genetics had moved on without me, but I still knew about science and I could write. So I took a science journalism class, but it seemed to me that wildlife conservation was related to sustainability, which seemed to be something you could just about get paid for. So I got a certificate in sustainable business practices. And I took a professional development class uh, and they actually offered me a position as a leadership coach. So I was helping scientists move into executive roles. And all of that was just ticky tack, you know, I was trying to do whatever I could to just try and connect the dots into a story that made sense um, for myself so that I could get back on the track. And then, you know, one day I was driving along the road and uh, I hear this segment on public radio about biomimicry, innovation inspired by nature. And they had a little interview with Janine on there and she was talking about the bullet train. And I just knew, I was like, stop the presses. This is for me. This is for me. So I just felt like here's someplace I could be whole. I could be an artist. I could be a scientist. Um, I could try to do something about the state of the world and maybe even make a living uh, doing something I loved, you know, being outside and, you know, still studying all the creatures that I love. So what I did, I started a blog. Um, I co-founded by Mimcrew San Diego, Jacques Shirazi. Hi, Jacques. And I started a blog, uh, Bioinspired Inc., which um, Inhabitat.com picked up. That's an on design, online design magazine that at the time had 3 million viewers. So I was able to, uh, to roll that into a Kickstarter campaign um, to fund a book. So even though I had no money, I was able to, to write this book in the cracks of the day. So, you know, I'd like work uh, while I was driving. I had my little iPad on my passenger seat and I would write there at stoplights and when I was waiting for kids and the doctor's offices. Um, but I did actually get that book done. So in 2017, I finally published Teaming, How Nature's Oldest Teams Adapt and Thrive, uh, which is today, it's widely known as the defining work.
on um, organizational biomimicry. So today I'm providing bio-inspired innovation to Fortune 100 companies like Cisco, and I help entrepreneurs and leaders and agents of change discover um, the power of evolutionary design for you know, midwifing these life-friendly transformations. So I work with David Sloan Wilson at the Evolution Institute. Uh, his business action group is, um, we're leading the effort to design living systems curricula for business schools. Um, and I also am a headline thought leader for the Growth Institute, which um, reaches mid-cap entrepreneurs. So I'm, I'm the Dean of the School for Biocultural Leadership in Panama, which is the education wing of Geoversity. That's a 30-year nonprofit uh, that works to support and empower and grow biocultural leadership um, for the protection and care of the land and the air and the water that all life depends on. Hey, it feels really good, you know, it's equal parts art and science, community well-being. It's a fully integrated life and I love my work um, and biomimicry was a portal to that for me uh, and that's something usually denied to us in our in our silo. So I'm very great. It's the process itself of biomimicry that awakens people to what they already know. You know, that the goal of life is to match your nature with nature. Right? Joseph Campbell said that. That imagination and observation, consideration of other species, other ways of doing things, and then that critical thinking alive in us. So it's a, it really is a portal to living systems thinking. And that's, you know, what we need in our world today to try to design better systems. It just makes such instant intuitive sense to people. It's just powerful for developing the capabilities that we need. And above all, what I really love about it is how inspiring and hopeful that it is. Well, we've all inherited that talent um, for creating those conditions conducive to life because 4 billion years of our ancestors did it before us. We've lived in intimate exchange with the creatures around us for millions of years and we're bound by the same accounting. You know, our lives obey the same forces. And, we know that now with COVID, you know, we are live hosts and carriers and we're, we're full-fledged participants in these living systems, like it or not. And we better start designing for that reality. Even at the highest levels, um, the decision makers are really blind and illiterate uh, when it comes to living systems and the way that um, life and human nature actually work. You know, all of our systems and processes really were imposed on our ancestors at some point. And so we really have to um, tune in to those patterns again and learn to see again, you know, not what we think we see, um, but what is really before us. We have to rehumanize our minds and our way of life so we can grow the thriving places that feed us again. A watershed, our, the palm of our hand, the patterns of diversification and trust in the world that drives life's complexity and collaboration. You know, the living things surf on those patterns uh, like water you know, flowing down mountains. And, and we all know those patterns of rivers and roots and veins and arteries. And that's the way life works. Biomimicry is a way you can really ask questions that blow the doors off the things that we think we know. You know, what if businesses ran on sunlight? Or what if manufacture was carbon negative? Um, or what if our waste was like fallen leaves? Uh, feeding the next generation of insects and fungus. These are all things that life does and we can do it as well. If we tune into those patterns. We just need to quiet our cleverness, like you know, Dana Baumeister said, and try to think in watersheds and veins and arteries and tides and tracks and trails of our, of our friends and relatives um, until we can start to think in those watersheds and they reawaken conscious evolution and create conditions conducive to life. So I want to say thank you, Janine, for your amazing book. And thank you to the Biomimic community for everything. It's just really beautiful thing. So very proud and excited to be in this community 25 years. Congratulations. Um, and that persistence, that longevity is just evidence of the power that it brings to all of our lives. So thank you and take care.